a very good morning to you my dear sisters and brothers and welcome to Carmelite reflection on the day's readings let us invoke the name of the trinity before we begin our reflections in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen dear friends today is the 25th of june sunday and we are celebrating the 12th sunday in ordinary time and for our gospel reflection we have a passage from matthew chapter 10 verses 26 to 33 let us now meditatively listen to the gospel passage a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew at that time jesus said to his apostles have no fear of them for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known what i tell you in the dark say in the light and what you hear whispered proclaim on the house tops and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul rather Fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the heads of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once there was a woman who was going through some very difficult, hard times. She thought that she would never experience joy in her life. However, one day, when she was sitting in her kitchen, crying, she noticed a small sparrow. Somehow, it had entered into her kitchen and this lady opened the door, thinking the sparrow would just fly out. <coughs> There was a window above the door. Instead of flying out through the open door, the sparrow kept trying to fly out through the closed window. Several times the sparrow flew at the closed window and smacked itself into it until it got so weak it could no longer fly. It could only walk. Well, this story has a happy ending. When it could no longer fly, the sparrow simply walked out of the door, through the door, to freedom. And there was a smile on the face of this old lady. Dear friends, we fly into a closed window whenever we disconnect ourselves from the divine because of lack of prayer and so lose our higher consciousness or awareness of the immense value of our immortal soul. God's providence consists of leading things to their ends, including human beings, to their proper and final destination, if we cooperate with God's grace. Now, the readings of this Sunday call to trust in God. Although our circumstances can be unsettling or frightening, God is always caring for us. In the first reading, we see how Prophet Jeremiah trusts in the Lord even though he is being plotted against. The psalm expresses hope that God will hear our prayers in times of distress. The second reading reminds us that Jesus rescued us even though we were sinners. And the gospel, Jesus tells us to fear no one and that we are loved and cared for by God. Dear friends, we might have certainly experienced in life that when things are going well and life is good, we are all excited, thrilled and enthusiastic. 
However, sometimes something really unexpected and unfortunate might happen to throw everything off the track. We might be confronted with some challenges or struggles which we did not anticipate. Such phenomenon is life in life can be often discouraging, disheartening, and even demoralizing. But it's also the reality of human existence which we gradually need to accept. Jeremiah in the first reading is under attack of, for denouncing the injustices of his time. He often complained to God that he never wanted to be a prophet, but God called and even insisted. Jeremiah was always going through the ups and downs of emotions and physical threats, constantly calling on God for mercy and justice. He lived with terror and fear. Ultimately, he simply entrusts his cause to the Lord. However, Jeremiah had the assurance of his faith, so he kept advising leaders and people to take the hard road of fidelity to God and the divine commands, to pay attention to what God wanted the nation to do. Persecutions are real, but so is God's protective grace. Unfortunately, the nation ignored Jeremiah, and as he predicted, the nation was punished by God and banished into exile in Babylon. Three times in the Gospel, dear friends, Jesus tells his disciples not to be afraid. He has warned them already that they, are, they will encounter opposition and persecution when they try to fulfill his mission. Now, he himself is the first example who was constantly opposed and persecuted and ultimately crucified. Jesus lets his disciples know to ex expect the same treatment when they do his work. At the same time, they are not to fear. Jesus tells them that people might be able to kill the body, but they cannot destroy their soul. Now, this segment of Matthew's Gospel is called the Discourse on the Mission. I will be continued even next Sunday. In this discourse, Jesus is encouraging the disciples to preach with boldness despite those who will oppose them. This is the call to all of us which comes from baptism. We are all to proclaim the mission of Jesus to the world. We are to be God, we are to be good news to others in spite of unexpected obstacles, setbacks and even threats. Matthew is writing his gospel to encourage the first generation Christians. After the initial success of preaching and expanding the infant church, the early disciples and followers were experiencing opposition and even violence from those who wanted to stamp out this movement. The message of Jesus challenged people as it still does today. It demanded of them that they see things differently, which they were willing, unwilling to do. Instead of engaging in the message and trying to understand it, they attacked the messengers. Some of that is happening even today and in, and in different fashion. It also is happening with the racial protests and demands for reform, where some attack the messengers because what they are demanding will cause a huge change, which is actually long awaited and much needed, both in the society and in the church. Dear friends, the early Christians looked to God for support. They were discouraged in some ways and afraid in other ways. Matthew wants them to know that this is part of what Jesus always prepared them for. Each of them is important and God knows them and will not abandon them. The worth of the person is without compare. Human beings are the cream and crown of creation. Jesus indicates that if God cares even for the tiny sparrow, how much more will God care for us? God knows us, even things we do not know about ourselves. President Franklin Roosevelt told the nation at his first inauguration, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. With that, he rallied and discouraged people to start the long march out of the so-called Great Depression of his time. 
Fear can paralyze us, make us immobile and crippled. But when it is named and confronted, it can be overcome. For every Christian believer, fear must give way to hope. The cross is a prime example for this. Jesus, even though he had been in terror and agony the night before, not only embraced the cross but forgave his murderers while he was dying. The fear of death for Jesus was robbed of any power it had over him. With that spectacular gesture of reconciling hope. Reconciliation is what we need today to defeat all that is contrary to the spirit of the gospel. Reconciliation forgives, cares for the other, is generous and restores community. We must persevere and not give up our hope. Reconciliation is always possible even in the deepest moments of suffering. The readings remind us that God is always actively present in our lives. This is our hope which overcomes our fear. When we keep faith in God, especially in troubling times and under threat, there is no doubt God will protect and restore what God loves. Life in Christ is essential and eternal, even if the body suffers and dies. Despite the darkness that comes at various moments of life, we must live in the confidence that God gives us what we need. We are called to a life and future filled with hope here and in the hereafter. Assuring that God cares for us, Jesus boldly says, Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Jeremiah later, knowing this truth, put up with being beaten and placed in the stocks overnight and was even thrown into an open cistern and left for death. Yet, whether sparrows are falling or human hair is disappearing, God always pays attention to everything within us and around us. Dear friends, we have five beautiful and inspirational themes as take away from the, for the coming week. First of all, Perseverance in the face of opposition. The first reading from Jeremiah, as we have seen, portrays the challenges and opposition that the prophet faced in fulfilling his calling. Despite the persecution, Jeremiah remained steadfast in his faith and trust in God. This theme encourages us believers to persevere in our faith even when confronted with adversity or opposition. Second, trust in God's faithfulness. Jeremiah exemplifies unwavering trust in God's faithfulness and protection, recognizing God as a dread warrior. This emphasizes reliance on God's strength during difficulties. The gospel stresses trust in God's providential care, assuring disciples of his awareness and urging trust in his guidance, care and protection. This invites us all to be convinced and be assured in God's promises and his fidelity. Thirdly, redemption and salvation. The second reading delves into the concept of redemption and salvation. It discusses how sin entered the world through Adam, leading to death and separation from God. However, through the gift of Jesus Christ, redemption is offered and believers can be reconciled with God. This theme emphasizes the transformative power of Christ's sacrifice and the opportunity for new life and salvation. Fourthly, fear and courage. The gospel reading addresses fear and courage in the context of proclaiming the message of Christ. Jesus reassures his disciples not to fear those who oppose them, but to trust in God's providence and protection. This theme encourages us to overcome fear and rely on the courage that comes from faith in God. And finally, the fifth one, God's care for individuals. The Gospel reading further emphasizes the value that God places on each individual. Jesus affirms that God's care extends even to the smallest details of his creation. This theme finally reminds us of our worth in God's eyes and reassures us of his intimate knowledge and care. 
Dear friends, let us send our reflection with a short prayer. Lord, help us to be courageous enough, especially when we continue the work of Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the responsorial psalm, Psalm 69, picks the theme of the prayer of Jeremiah and echoes it with such words as, The Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his own in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise. Let's pray that psalm now. Your response, in your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. It is for you that I suffer taunts. That shame has covered my face. To my own kin, I have become an outcast, a stranger to the children of my mother. Zeal for your house consumes me, and taunts against you fall on me. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favor. In your great mercy, answer me, O God, with your salvation that never fails. Lord, answer, for your mercy is kind. In your great compassion, turn toward me. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, and does not spurn his own in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the seas and everything that moves in them. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, Unto the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, we remember all those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially. Brother Jeswin Tom Binoy, Father John Lobo, both are Carmelites, Patsy Fernandez from Kuwait, Sister Fatima Fernandez, Charity Sisters, Priscilla de Sousaro from Ville Parle, Mumbai. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. We pray for the departed soul of Lily Roach from Eliar Padau, Mangalore, Jerome and Mary Rodriguez from Kana, Belwai, and Martin Fernandez from Bola. May the Lord grant them eternal rest. Brothers and sisters, we will be organizing a pilgrimage to the Holy Land in the month of October. Those who would like to join us, kindly WhatsApp me your details and I will give you further details. My WhatsApp number is 948126322 948126322 We thank Reverend Father Ratan Almeida for sharing his reflection with us today. Thank you. Have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.